Welcome to stage three of the Apex Sew Along. This week we're going to focus on preparing the lining for your Apex Carry. I have the finished bag here that I used for the video. Um, this week we will make the well zipped pocket, the internal angle pocket, the lanyard strip with the swivel hook at the end. Um, in one version we'll do the side snap loop um, at the top facing and in the other version when we're adding the top facing we will add a zipped closure to your apex carry. Um, I had intended that we would close the side seams as part of the stage as well but actually there's quite a lot in those two those those steps already so we will cover that as part of stage four next week. <laughs> So what we need are our main linings. So one I've marked the notches for the for the welt zip pocket. I have my lining with that drawn on it, and that should be drawn on the wrong side of the lining. There is no right or wrong side of this, but this is the wrong side of the lining. And I have my zip, which I can check is going to sit neatly inside that so that's all good so what i will do here is what i'm going to do is i'm going to line up those dots on those corners and i'm going to just double check that it's nicely parallel with the top as well while i'm at it so it's usually just a simple matter of doing that yep that's about right where is my ruler parallel about four centimeters from the top okay so I'm going to pin this around the perimeter then I'm going to stitch around the perimeter so just a reminder again this is the right side of the pocket lining facing the right side of the bag we're going to stitch them and then that's going to pull through So my seam mill or my stitch length is about two. Okay, so I've stitched all the way around. Now, as you can see, this there's it's not actually too much. This is very low loft, this interfacing, so it's not going to prove too much of a problem, but I'll probably trim back some of the, pull off some of the interfacing of that bit. But for now, I'm just going to fold it in half, making sure it's right on top of itself. Get a good scissors. Now, it's not great. <laughs> now, I'm just going to cut a little snip. So, there. And then cut into the corner very close to the corner without snipping the stitches. So you see I'm about a millimetre from the corners. Now I'm just going to trim back some of that uh, extra interfacing. do now is feed this pocket through to the other side and press it all into place. So the advantage of having the lining and the pocket lining in the same fabric is it's just going to hide any little little bits of fabric that are sticking out and, uh, and with the same coloured thread 
it's all gonna look much or very neat even if I'm not very neat. So I'm gonna pull all of that into place. Pull all of it into place and I'm going to go over to the, the iron now and press it all to neaten it up. Okay, that's pretty neat. A couple of little drag lines there, but that's okay. You can see they're pretty perfect there. Um, get my zip and press it in underneath the pin it in place. I think I'm going to go stand over there and do it. So I'm going to pin it in place and come back and sew around the edges. So now I'm going to start and sew it off. And if you'd like to use a zipper foot for this, you can. It's a nice narrow foot here on this machine. I, I don't really need to. So I'll leave the zip up there, and I'll start just out of the way of the just out of the way of the zip. Now I'll move my zipper pull out of the way. Now, that's pretty neat. The next thing I'll do is close up the lining bag. close it up I'll pin around the sides and then I will sew around the sides with a one centimeter three eighth inch seam allowance so you just fold the lining out of the way the main lining back to a stitch length two and I'm going to sew with a one centimeter or three eighth inch seam allowance. lining is or the well zipped pocket is all ready and the next thing I'm going to do is prepare the internal angle pocket <laughs> so I'm going to place the internal angle pocket right sides together and I'm going to stitch along the angled seam and the bottom seam with a one centimeter or three eighth inch seam allowance.
Now I'm just going to clip into that corner there so that this will press open. Again, right in close to the, the stitch line without actually clipping the stitches. So now I'm going to turn this right sides out. I'll press it all flat and then I'll do a top stitch along the angled side. I'm not going, I'm not going to top stitch along the bottom. So that's all pressed neatly. I'm going to top stitch along there. I'm not going to top stitch along here because that's going to be top stitch when I fix it to the main lining. So you should line up your your angle pocket lining matching the top corners on the top line of your main lining and then there's a notch here and here which you can line up which I don't actually have marked but they should be there but fundamentally just make sure it's neat and, and parallel. And an important point to note is to make sure that you don't catch your pocket when you're stitching this. Now, I'm going to baste along the top corners and down the sides first. And then I'm going to top stitch along the bottom and then, then I'm going to top stitch from the top down to meet the center point there. I'm going to top stitch with a half centimeter seam allowance or a three sixteenths of an inch approximately. Did I say top stitch? I mean baste. Now I'm going to top stitch along the bottom. Okay, so that's top stitched. And next we're going to top stitch on there. So I'm going to mark with my, my butter knife um, down from the middle line. To, So I'm using the blunt side of my butter knife. And I will stitch along there. So I'm just going to secure to the top by doing about um, three or four single back stitches. So this is my lanyard strip. It's going to be attached here. 
So I'm going to fold this, make this into the lanyard strap. So I'll be folding it in half, lengthways pressing, open it up, fold it in half there, or sorry, fold it into the center, into the center, press and press. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll bring it over to the iron, do the pressing and I'll come back. Okay, so I have my little lanyard, um, swivel hook, and my lanyard strap half ready. So I folded it in half, pressed. I folded those sides in, pressed, and then folded it in half, in half again. And now I'm going to just top stitch down one side to close it. I'm just trimming off the edge. Now, there's a few ways of attaching the, the swivel hook, but fundamentally, I'm going to put it in, fold this in underneath, and I can either do a square of stitches or I can use a, a rivet. I think I'm just going to do a square of stitches. It's a little bit tricky because it's small and fiddly. It's a little bit fiddly, but let's give it a go. Now, this is a neat little square of stitches. Now, we're going to attach it. Now, there should be a notch here, which I would have marked earlier, which I didn't. There. So pretend there's a notch there. Let's attach it. There we are. The lining is all ready to assemble. Oh, I have to add the top facing, don't I? That's the next job. Okay, for my, to install my rivet, I'm gonna use an awl to, to poke the hole. I'm going to use my hand press to, to press the rivet in place. I should have two, two of those, but I only have one. So I'll be using the, the other, um, the other piece from the snap fixing, which will at least not mark the rivet. But ideally you should have the correct pieces. Um, and then I'll get my one double sided rivet. So and I'm going to just check where I should position that. So use the one rivet and then I'll just make an indent with that and then I'll just double check that it's centered okay so with my awl I'm going to slowly poke a hole through so as I've said before using the awl I do that so that I'm not um breaking very many threads in the fabric so the, the awl pokes through and pushes all the other threads out of the way rather than cutting through by punching a hole through. Um, it does distort the fabric a little bit, but overall I prefer the, the awl, using the awl. Um, it just needs to be big enough to take the, the leg of the rivet. Now, that's ready to go. There. 
So that's that done. Okay, so I've just grabbed my pattern piece because it has my um, my zipper notches on it, which I want to double check. I have my other lining piece and my two top facings. And I've also got my zip. Now, um, this is what I have, which is actually a 65 centimeter opening zip. Um, but it was the best version that I had in terms of the color and the length that works for me. So as per the tutorial, I'm going to fold my zipper tape back and stitch along there to secure the tape um, out of the way. So that'll be the first thing to do to prepare the zip. And then the other end, I have a big um, opening end. So it's like for a jacket or a coat. Um, so I'm probably just going to cut across that and treat it as if it were a continuous zip at this end. I just want to make sure it's as close to 90 degrees so that it's nice and neat. So that's it all secured. And that's why I've pulled the zipper tape to the back, to, to behind the, the main zip. And that's the other side. So I've kept as close to the edge of the zipper tape as possible so that none of this will be visible or any risk of it being visible. And I will finish the zipper tape end at the um, at the end once the zip has been installed. So next up I'm going to double check or maybe in this case actually mark the um, the notches in my um, my main my top facing. So I'm going to because I'm using a black fabric, I'm actually going to clip it. You'll see I've called up the top facing to be cut mirrored. That's because you need, um, that's because the at the opening end of the zip, you've got a three and a half centimeter gap. And at the closed end of the zip, you've got a, a five and a half centimeter gap. Um, and that's just because at the closed end, you'll end up kind of having the end of the zip, which you might want to feed down into the bag and they just give you a little bit more space for that. So first things at first, I'm going to clip my notches. Okay, so there's my opening end, that's my closed end. So, I want to be securing my main zip along, lining up the edge here with the opening end and pinning it in place. Again, this is where um, Wonder Tape comes in great if you'd like to use it. I'm going to pin as far as the notch, the closed end notch. And then I'm going to just add in a couple of extra pins here to keep it, make sure it stays where it should be when I pull the zip out of the way for sewing. So I'm going to pull it out of the way and I'm just going to pin it up. I like to just pin it up to the edge of my um, my top facing just so that it's, it's out of the way. And now I'm going to stitch along here. Because I've got quite a wide tape, I think I'm just going to leave my normal foot in and I'll be able to zip the tape. So I'm going to baste it in place the whole way along.
So that's that basted in place. And let's touch to the other side then. So what I'm going to do here most importantly is make sure my zip is as, as much in the exact same alignment on both sides of the main, the top facing. Um, I, and if the notches, if it hasn't lined up perfectly on the notches, that's not as important as having the zips evenly placed. So again, I'm going to put a double pin, place a double pin in there and then pull that down and pin it out of the way. So I'm just going to baste it in place again. My zip has shifted a little bit there, so I'm just going to repin it and re pull it out of the way again. So I'm going to pin this back up here again. I took it off just to make it easier to maneuver the zip around, but I'm going to pin it back up again for when I'm attaching the zip to the main lining. One lining piece, just making sure you can still see it. And I've got my open side of the zip, and I'm going to line that up there, and I'm going to stitch in place. Uh, make sure my center points and my edge, my sides are nicely zipped, keeping the zipper tape out of out of place, out of the way there. And then I'll repeat for the other side. Okay, um, similar to how when I've sewn um, a few layers together, I like to make sure that my most stable fabric is on the top and then you get less shifting of fabric. If you're not using a walking foot, which isn't really practical in inserting a zip, um, I like to keep the more stable type fabric, which is in this case, the, the main, let's take the top facing. Um, so I'm gonna make, stitch that in place with it on the top. I have my, my zip pulled out of the way and I'm making sure it's sitting reasonably flat there as it, as it bends down. So I have my zipper foot installed um, and I'm going to sew this with just under a one centimeter seam allowance, I think. neatly stitched and I'm going to press the take off the, um, the pin press the seam allowance up and I'm going to wait I'm not going to top stitch it now I'm going to insert the other zip for the other side first and I will top stitch it just in case I need to to shift anything I'm going to top stitch it um, after I've got the second side fitted. So we'll repeat the process for the second side. So I'm just making sure my zip isn't in any way twisted the wrong way around and I'm going to attach it, pin it in place and attach it in the same way. Ok, 
Okay, I'm just gonna make sure, I'm slow down here, make sure my zip is sitting um, reasonably flat in under there. Okay, so that's reasonably straight and even. So yeah, that's not too bad. The zips on both sides are are in very similar locations, and um, that's the most important bit. And at the other end, it's a little bit less important because the zip is kind of pulling down in anyway. Okay. So next thing, I will um, change my thread to to match my black. And I'm going to top stitch along the zip. Okay, so I've changed my top thread to black, and I'm going to, and I've changed my foot back uh, because I think I've enough room there to top stitch along the, the zip using my standard foot. If you want to keep your zipper foot on to make that easier, please do. I've pressed this. So it's nice and flat, making sure not to melt my zip because my zip is plastic. Um, but I have I've pressed it. Okay, that looks great. And we'll do the other side. Oh, uh, mine is an opening zipper, which is why I have my two pieces separate. Um, so. I nearly had a moment of panic that uh, it had all fallen apart on me. Yeah, um. okay, so that's lovely and neat as well. Great. Uh, I'll stick them back together and then we'll finish the, the zip end. Yeah, so they're very neatly, quite evenly lined up. Which is lovely. Now, I have a few ways I could finish this um, zip end. In the tutorial, I had a zipper tab, but I do like using actual little metal zipper ends. I'm going to show you one of those um, because adding the tab at the end is, is, is fairly straightforward. Um, but um, I like these little things, so I'll show you them. Okay, so that's a lovely little niche zipper end foot that I'm going to fit on the end of that. Okay, so I'm going to use a craft, child's craft scissors, and I'm going to cut the end off this zip. Um, the zip is a, is a bit longer than it needs to be, but that doesn't bother me, so I'm just going to cut the end off it. That was more work than I expected. Okay, so I'm leaving that all off. So you need a tiny screwdriver, which I don't have at hand, but I know the top of this knife works. So you unscrew the screw, fold this in really neatly, so that's looking pretty neat now to me. So now I'm going to get my little screw, try and get it started by hand. Um, check that's good and flat. So that's another way of finishing your zip which is quick and super neat. 
and especially if you're using a, a matching snap. Okay. So that's the zipper done. The, the rest of the bag is, is uh, finished in much the same fashion as in the, the rest of the tutorial. Should be a center notch there, which there isn't. So I'm going to fold that in half, just crease it to mark my center. We're going to stitch along the seam with a one centimeter seam allowance. Okay, and press that up, which is very satisfying. Pressing the top facing up. And now, lovely, I'm going to top stitch along here. Lovely and neat. Okay. And I'm going to repeat the exact same for this side. Press the top facing. Again, we're going to top stitch along there. Isn't that lovely and neat? Yay! Now, that's looking lovely. Really nice lining. Got my lanyard strip. And I've got my weld pocket, I've got my two pockets, and yeah. So the next thing we're going to do is attach the, the snap loops and strips. So first things first, I'm going to add the, uh, the snap fixings to this guy. This one's going to be centered. Just, just position it where it is neatest. So I'm gonna put it there in the center. So push a little hole in it. And then the next piece, so this is going to fold over and snap onto that. So the next piece is meant to be five centimeters, which is I think about two inches. Yeah, so five centimeters. Do I use this guy? Might be handy. Um, from the center to there. Does that make sense now? Which is there. And that'll be sewn in with a one centimeter seam allowance. So that'll be gone and that'll be sitting just there. Yep, that's perfect. Now, so that's ready to go to fit onto one side. Um, so the center of this, let's mark the center of that. 
So the center, well, let's just eyeball it. The center notch here. And so that's going to be positioned there. And we're going to baste it in here with a five centimeter seam allowance, the center on there. And when that's done, we're going to be adding another snap fixing here. So this can sit really neatly if it's not being used, it's snapped away. Okay, so now that nicely parallel. Press this down to make a little indent. And you can just about see that position. So that's the center of it. So that's where I'm going to put another snap. And I think I'm going to add a bit of reinforcement behind that, even a little bit of felt, and that'll keep it, just give it a bit of strength. Even that much. Just give it a little bit more. So poke a hole in that. And so now this is why we, I told, I say you need two snap fixings for this. You actually need one and a half, but I doubt there's anywhere you can buy one and a half. So, in fact, I doubt there's anywhere you can buy one <laughs> anyway, but you need two in total. So let's there. Need to poke that a bit more. So that snap fixing is ready and strong and can snap in there, good and strong. And now we're just going to attach the side snap loop there. So I have my side snap loop and there's my center notch. So it's quite stiff this turn it that way. We're going to line it up so it's about two centimeters, three inch roughly. As long as it's centered, that's all that matters. So we're going to, I'm going to hold that in place while I stitch it. So it seems that my video stopped recording just as I was about to sew those on. So I sewed them on with a, I sewed them on two centimeters apart, centered on the notch um, with a five millimeter seam allowance and um, starting my stitching in the center to secure the position of the strip and then going back and forth, back and forth. Um, the next thing I will be doing is attaching the two linings together adding a magnetic strip and magnetic snap and then we'll be nearly finished so yeah that's all working out nicely and um, that should look great when it's all done but for now we're done so that's it uh, stage three of the Apex Sew Along done. Uh, next week we'll move on to stage four where we're going to finish the Apex Carry All together, attaching the main lining to the outer bag and uh, all those finishing steps. See you then. Mm -hmm.